his turn to play. Lift up your voice and appreciate God. Celebrate him I because his word you, is true. His I word is you. powerful. The reality of his word, thank him. Father, we say thank you. We appreciate your name. We celebrate your name. Say upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. In this day of Marita breakthrough banquet, you are possessing your own possession in the name of Jesus. God is setting you out of this Zion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We appreciate your name. We celebrate your name. Ask the Lord to speak to you. Lord, let my own word come. Your word is true. Your word is light. Your word will shatter that darkness. Your word will expose anything that is not of you in my life. Let that word come. Thank you, Father. Say the entrance of your word. Give a light on the simple. Let your word shatter every limitation, every barrier, every blockade. Let your word open me up to my marital breakthrough. Let your word open me up to my marital breakthrough. Let your word establish my relationship. Let your word establish my marriage. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' matchless name, we are praying. Please be seated. Put your hands together for Jesus. I want to appreciate God and also the privilege given to me by his servant, our resident pastor, to bring the word of God in this first service. Thank you, sir. Amazing testimony came this morning. Say, he went out to evangelize and God began to engage him. As you evangelize in this operation, ten souls for Christ. Your, beyond your desire, God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. He made a call and he said, I needed a business transaction. But he said, no, it is not time for business. It is time for the reality. And God changed the direction. May God give somebody a speedy intervention this year in the name of Jesus. Speedy intervention this year in the name of Jesus. So God knows your need more than you know. God knows your need more than you know. All you need to do is just to follow him. And you begin to bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. Somebody's storm is over today in the name of Jesus. Somebody's storm is over today in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, marital storm, financial storm, destiny storm, they are over today in the name of Jesus. And whatever siege that has been placed against anyone, maritally, financially, it is broken today in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Say with me, my star is rising. I didn't hear you. Say it convincingly to yourself. Because the Bible says you shall have whatever you say. Your star shall rise in the name of Jesus. Unveiling our break, breaking limit heritage in the world. Unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. Anytime we open the world, something breaks loose. Anytime an understanding comes on a subject matter, you arise with authority. When Bishop caught the light, of prosperity. He said, I cannot be poor. Something got loose in his life. When he got the word that he himself took my infirmity, something left him. In this month, by the light of God's word, something shall leave you in the name of Jesus. You are changing position in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Looking at our limit breaking heritage from the mirror of the world. Looking at our breaking limit heritage from the mirror of the world. Anytime you look at the mirror, there is something you see. Say that you are okay, or you need to balance, or you need to remove something. So, anytime we look at the mirror of God's world, there is something to see. Either to be corrected, to be reproved, or to be perfected, or instruction. So the word of God, the mirror of God's word, is for instruction. Now, what the physical mirror, the, the physical mirror does, 
Yes, it's good. But what the natural mirror does is far better. Just the same way we say physical injury and internal injury. What the spiritual mirror, that's the word of God, is, is it works in the internal, inside. Why the physical mirror shows you the outer part. So the spiritual mirror, which is the word of God, opens you up to who you are. Your real you is known from the spirit, from the mirror of the word of God. And in Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk, sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, say, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So who you look at determines what you reflect. So when you look at the mirror of God's word, you begin to reflect God in your life. You begin to make some adjustment. And in Psalm 34 verse 5, say they look unto him and they were lighting and they were not ashamed. They look unto him. So when you look unto the God's war, shame and reproach is thrown away. When you look unto God, you look like him. You begin to behave like him. And no more limitation. I decree that in this month of my star is rising, there shall be no more limitation in the name of Jesus. James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25. He said, but ye, but be ye doers of the world. Don't just be a looker, but be a doer. And not hear us only, deceiving ourselves. For if any be a hearer of the world and not a doer, he is like a man beholding a, his natural mirror, sorry, natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgotten what manner of man he was but verse 25 but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring and not be a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word of the word that man is blessed indeed you shall be blessed indeed in the name of jesus you shall be blessed indeed in the name of jesus revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says something that there is blessing in reading the word. There is blessing in studying the word. Say, blessed is it that read it and hear the words. Blessed is it. Anytime you study God's word, there is a dimension of blessing you step into. But reading is not enough because reading can give you head knowledge, but illumination. Read for understanding, read to get light. That is where the blessings come. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11. Jeremiah 1 verse 11. Say, moreover, came unto me, Jeremiah, what seest thou? God is talking to us this morning. Today being our covenant, our marital breakthrough banquet. What seest thou? Are you seeing yourself married? Are you seeing yourself enjoying your relationship? What seest thou? And he say, I see. So, your seeing is very important. What you see. And that's why in Psalm 119 verse 8, he say, Open up my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of the law. This month, you shall see wondrous things in the name of Jesus. Then, in verse 12, he say, Then the Lord said unto, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. And because you have well seen, I will hasten it to perform. So it is what you see that God performs. What you see is what God brings to pass. I see something happening speedily in your life this month in the name of Jesus. I see you get connected in your relationship this month in the name of Jesus. Say, as far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see, I will give it to you. So see where. And the Bible says, behold, I will do a new thing. God will do a new thing in our relationship today in the name of Jesus. God will spark up new relationship today in the name of Jesus. God will spark up new marriages in our midst in the name of Jesus. So Jeremiah said, I saw, and God said, I will hasten my word to perform. So it is what you see that God hastened to do. And I see God doing things speedily in our life in the name of Jesus. So each time we look at the word of God, few things happen. One, among other things, when you read and study, you will see 
the nature and character of God. So anytime you study God's word, you will see the nature and the character of God. Remember, we are created in his image. That's the only way you can walk in his image. By studying his word. By looking at the word of God. Two, what do we gain? Or what happened? When we look at, into his word, we see what God has provided for you. What he has provided for you there. The Bible carries so many things. We call it spiritual supermarket. It's a supermarket. You see what is available for you. And which is obtainable by the eye of faith. So you see what God has for you that is written. And those are things that God has freely given to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, sorry, two verse twelve. It says, "Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices." And verse twelve says, "Furthermore, when I went to Tours to preach Christ, Christ's gospel." And the doors were open unto me of the Lord. As you study God's word, you will see the doors that are available for you in these seasons in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So in the word of God, you will become informed about the limits of Satan. It is in his word that you know your superiority over the devil. In this month, you are riding over the devil in the name of Jesus. The devil of barrenness, the darkness of, of, of prolonged waiting shall be over in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Also, you are redeemed to be a fruitful vine, not, to, not a barren fig. Everyone God created, God created them to be fruitful. In Psalm 128, 1 to 5, say, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. And walketh in his way, for thou shall eat the labor of thy hand. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Verse 3, place of emphasis. Said, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the side of thy house, thy children, and every plant around about your table. This is God's promise for everyone. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, he said, Be fruitful and multiply. You don't pray to be fruitful. You just walk into fruitfulness because that is God's command for you. Say, I'm a fruitful vine. I'm not barren. I'm not, I'm a fruitful vine. Because the word says so. And that shall be in the name of Jesus. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. And one of the ways to be fruitful in John chapter 15, verse 16. Say, you have not chosen me. I have chosen that you might go and bring forth fruit. And that fruit might abide. Then you shall ask anything in my name. So be a fruit bearing individual and you will never lack fruitfulness. Be a fruit bearing believer and you will never lack fruitfulness. Be a soul winner and you never lack, and you never need to beg to be fruitful. No one will, in our midst will beg to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Also, you are redeemed a lively stone. You are redeemed a lively stone. To command dominion. It takes power to walk in the dominion. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 5, say, Ye also, a lively stone, are built upon spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus. So every believer is a lively stone to offer spiritual sacrifice. And that give us, take us to the place of dominion. And nothing shall dominate you from this day in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you are a man and a woman in dominion, in authority. Every believer is a person in authority. You have dominion over sickness, dominion over blindness, dominion over issues of life. 
That is who you are. Being born again. And in Matthew chapter 21, verse 40, 20 to 45, I take verse 40, 42. Jesus Christ said unto them, Did you ever read in the scripture, understanding that the stone which the builder rejected, the same has become the head corner? I don't care who have rejected you, you shall be a major voice in your society in the name of Jesus. They have scorned at you, they have relegated you, but you shall move to the mountaintop in the name of Jesus. The stone which the builder have rejected has become the chief, has become the head of the corner. He said, and this is the lost doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. So we are a lively stone. We are a lively stone. The next one is that we are redeemed ambassadors of Christ to command dignity. To command honor. The honor word for dignity is honor. And what, how does that happen? Who is an ambassador? A representative of Christ. A representative of the kingdom. Wherever you are in that office. The kingdom of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors of, for Christ. As though he did beseech, did beseech you by us. We pray we pray you in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. So you, are, you have a ministry of reconciliation. You have the ministry of reconciliation. Every believer, every redeemer of the Lord is a reconciler. What do we mean? Bringing people back to God. Taking people from the hand of the devil and showing them the way, the gate of life. I see us walking in that position heavily position in the name of Jesus. So, to be an ambassador is to, is a kingdom representative to fight for God and to fight, and God fights for you. So, when you fight for God, God fights for you. An ambassador of Nigeria to U.S. does not need to do anything. Don't need to fight. All he needs is to stand to represent the, the, the nation that, was, that sent him. And everything that is accrued to him will be, will be given to him. I see somebody walking in honor and dignity because of your, your kingdom stewardship in the name of Jesus. So God is looking for kingdom representative on earth. May he find you in the name of Jesus. May he find you in the name of Jesus. Who are those kingdom representatives? Who are those ambassadors? They are those who stand for the principle of the kingdom. Those that will stand for the principle of the kingdom in every area, in every phase of their life. They will not, take, they will not behave the way others are behaving. They will not put their hand into what others are doing. They are the representative of the kingdom principle. Who are those kingdom representatives or ambassadors? They are people who are willing to say yes when the whole world says no. And say no where the whole world says yes provided you are on, on the side of God. Say no when others are saying yes. As long as you are on the side of God, you are a representative. I see many representatives of the kingdom arising in this assembly in the name of Jesus. Who are those representatives? They don't struggle for personal sources and prosperity. Rather, they are committed to the sources of the prosperity of the kingdom. That makes you an ambassador. You don't struggle for personal sources, but for the sources of the kingdom. And I see God raising kingdom financier kingdom ambassadors in our midst in the name of Jesus. You shall be the next to be reckoned as an ambassador in the name of Jesus. We are redeemed as seed of Abraham for generational impact. We are redeemed as seed of Abraham for what? Generational impact. In Galatians chapter 3, 13 to 14, and verse 29, he said, And the Lord said unto the woman, Sorry, Genesis chapter, Genesis 27 verse 17. That in thy blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of, the, of heaven and the, as the sun which is upon the sea, sure. And thy seed shall possess the gate of thy enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Through your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Why? Because thou obeyed my voice. By obeying God's voice, 
said, thy seed shall be blessed. Thy seed shall make impact. Thy seed shall be stars. And I told us, what's a star? Outstanding performance. Surprising wisdom and knowledge. That's what God wants our children. Taking the lead. And that shall be somebody's testimony in the name of Jesus. Your children shall take the lead in the name of Jesus. You shall take the lead in the name of Jesus. But how do we assess? To assess God's plan from his word. How do we assess his plan from his word? Number one, we must continue to walk in the spirit. We must continue to walk in the spirit. If we must assess the plan of God from his word, we must continue to walk in the spirit. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 to 11 say, I was in the spirit on the last day and I heard. So it takes me in the spirit to hear from God. And I heard a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What seest thou? What seest? Write it in a book. So there's what to see. Remember, we say it's what you see that God will hasten to perform. I see God performing all that you have seen come to pass in the name of Jesus. Say, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, and Samia, and unto Paragon, and to Tatra, and to Sardis, and unto the and unto Philadelphia, and unto Lodisha. So it is what you see that God brings about. But in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, say, if we live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, say, but as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So walk by the spirit. Take away bitterness. Take away malice. Take away unforgiveness. So when you walk in malice, unforgiveness, and bitterness, you are not walking in the spirit. And walking in the spirit also means don't grieve the Holy Spirit by your attitude. Because he will teach you. He will guide you. He will show you the things to come. Also, you must remain committed to be guided by the spirit. You must remain committed to be guided by the spirit. Isaiah 47, 40, 48, verse 17. Say, Thus said the Lord thy Redeemer, the only one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, we teach you thee to profit. But that's why you must continue to be guided by Him. What you know is very is small. But the Holy Ghost will come to open you more to more and more to those things that are not yet in your hand. So you need to align yourself with his guidance. You need to align yourself with his instruction. Say, which leader did the way that should go? So there is a way to go. There is a way to do things. May God show you and lead you in that way in the name of Jesus. May God lead you in that way in the name of Jesus. You will never miss his instruction in the name of Jesus. He said, if thou are hacking, now verse 21, say, and they tested not when he led them through the desert and caused the water to flow out of the rock. Water, inspiration, shall come out of you in the name of Jesus. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not in your understanding. Your understanding can be limited. But in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God will direct your path. God will lead you through in the name of Jesus. I see God changing somebody's story in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I want us to be on our feet and say, Father, I need your continuous guidance. I need your continuous leading. All through my journey in life, I need your continuous leading. Father, be on your feet. Until God leads you, you end up in frustration. Father, I need your continuous leading. I need your continuous leading. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your continuous leading. I need your guidance. I need your guidance. Even in the journey of life, I need your continuous leading. Continue to lead me through. Continue to lead my step. Continue to guide me through. I need you, Lord. I need you more than ever in that business, in that career, in that relationship. I need your leadings. I need your leadings. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. There are some of us here, you have led yourself 
And that's why you are where you are. You have seen frustration, limitation. But Jesus Christ said, I want to lead you. You want to give Jesus opportunity to lead you in your journey of life. You want Jesus Christ to help you. You want Jesus Christ to take you to the topmost top. You want Jesus Christ to end your frustration. You want your Jesus Christ to end those trials. All you need to hear is say, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This morning, somebody is entering the rest of God in the name of Jesus. If you are here this morning, you want to stop that plague in your life. You want to stop that struggle. The only way is to surrender to Jesus. If you are in that in our midst, don't be ashamed. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. You want Jesus Christ to help you. You want Jesus Christ to help you. You have tried on your own. Say, so lead out in your understanding. But in all the way, acknowledge him. He's the only one that can do it. Please uh, wave your hand. If you want Jesus Christ to help you, you want Jesus Christ to take you out of that struggle. You want Jesus Christ to take you out of that limitation. And if you have done that, please just come to the front. Take the next step of faith. Come to the front and he will deliver you. Come to the front. If you are coming, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to deliver you from the struggles of life. No more frustration. No more limitation. No more barriers. I surrender if you are coming, come quickly. Jesus Christ wants to do something new. He wants to take over your He wants to fight for you. Under your heart, and said this after me, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Forgive me my sins. Blood of Jesus, change my name and change my story. Give me a brand new heart. Give me a brand new life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life, and I'll serve you forever. Thank you, Lord, for making me brand new. I am born again in Jesus' mighty name. Put your right hand on your forehead. I'd like to pray for you. Father, let the miracle of salvation be the portion of everyone here. Flood their life with testimonies. Do in their life what you alone can do. Let today be the beginning of miracles in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Say a loud amen. Open your eyes. Congratulations. These pastors have a special attention.